Hello, welcome to my watercolour channel. Today I am going to be painting some sweet peas. I'm working on some digital work, so I'm going to do um, a drawing and painting just using, not using the background, just having the actual subjects in the painting. And I've been looking for inspiration for the drawings. Um, I've got this lovely um, catalogue, Marshall's catalogue with seeds, and they've got loads of lovely pictures of sweet peas. Beautiful flowers they are. I love them to bits. I love the scent. I love everything about them. And I'm, I've actually drawn out the plant itself from imagination and memory. Uh, so I haven't got um, a reference. So um, but what I'm going to do is, because I think a lot of people want to see the reference so they can have a go themselves. But what I've done is... I've done a drawing which you can't very, you can't see it very well in this image it's bleached out a little bit it's very pale I'm going to have that available free on my patreon page and I shall put the link down below how to get that and I shall talk about that more at the end of the video so keep watching and I shall tell you more anyway so I've done the drawing so I kind of know how the composition is going to work I love it very excited and now I'm just deciding on colors I think I like the very pink ones I like these that have got a bit of yellow in the middle and then they go to pink towards the edge. I quite like that. Um, I also quite like the dark ones, but they're not going to show up too well in my digital work. And I don't like the blue ones quite so much. I mean, I like them in real life, but I don't really want to do blue ones. They're nice. Right, I'm going to go for that. Now, that's a very nice, bright, corally pink. I've got to try and work out how to do that paint, that colour. Mm, I'm going to mix that. The paints I'm going to use are my core paints that I um, talked about in my last video, I think. <laughs> yeah, might as well. I've got them on here to use, so we're going to use them. Brushes, I'm just going to use a number. Oh, it's worn off. <laughs> I think that's an eight plus a number six. For some finer details. Um, right, let's get going, shall we? They do because I'm only working in the actual flowers. I don't need to worry about too much paint, really. All right, let's get mixing some nice colours. Need a scrap of paper to test on. That's very nice, but extremely dark. So just like water it down. Pretty close, isn't it? Pretty close. Well, I'll go for that, I think. Okay. Now. In a lot of, a lot of them have a bit of yellow coming up from the base, but these haven't, so they shan't have it. The base is where the deeper red is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet. Oh, I could barely see it. <laughs> All right, we're going to see something once the colour goes on. We're going to wet the actual petal. I'd say with clear water, but there's a hint of pink in my water. Because I didn't rinse out the brush very thoroughly. These are such fun to paint. And they could be as loose and lovely as you like. Because I'm using these for digital, I'm not treating them quite the same way I would a normal floral painting. I would have it a lot looser, but I need digital. So the base is fairly dark. I'm going to let the watercolour run and do its own thing. And it's darker here. And I love the way it's running. Beautiful flowing there. Lovely. Same on this whoop, no I'm not. Let's have some. Let's work on this one. 
I mean, the, the shapes are ever so abstract as well. You can never actually see them completely. I do love them. I'm going to do the leaves and the pea pod now. And let's mix up some nice green with some yellow. So they're often quite a fresh, bright green. The stems and everything are. So that's what we're going for. I'm going to leave those to dry and we're going to go back now to the flowers finish those off because really you don't have to do an awful lot. I'm just going to do a little bit of um, introducing some depth to the areas at the bases of each petal really. And I might just put a tiny line, I might do that with pencil actually, put a tiny line around the edge so I can see it clearly for scanning. Um, I probably wouldn't do that normally. to mix some more of the colour here. Oh, there is some crimson into it. I need a bit more thickness. There we go. A bit more body to the paint is needed. I've got way too much on my brush now. Right, so. It's kind of hard to tell what's happening here. I want to be able to suggest the lines that's on these. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. On these they've got really nice lines but I don't know if I can be able to do that so we might not do those we'll see how we get on I mean, you could painstakingly go in and do it but I don't really recommend that Maybe a bit of dry brush work and suggest it there we go that's doing it suggesting it lovely
Right, let's work on the stems now. I think I'm going to move to a smaller brush for those. I'm going to use the same colour mix, which is Viridian and Hansa Yellow Light, and it makes that lovely fresh green. And I've splashed water all over and we've painted. How I managed that. Right, I'm going to start. Actually, I'm going to lay some paper down so I don't smudge anything. Let's start up here. Too much paint on the brush, so I need to dab it off. And there's these um, areas of green here. I'm going to vary them. I'm going to drop in some other green in a minute. stem. I find painting stems very difficult. I find even drawing them difficult. So don't be surprised. I've been painting and drawing for 20 odd years. So don't be surprised if you find it difficult as well. I think that's what you kind of need. I'm going to dab in a bit of the dark there. Maybe a bit underneath there. And run a little bit down the edge. I'm not too, I'm not going to be uniform with it. I'll let the colours run together themselves a little bit. In fact, a fun way of doing this sort of thing is just to use water. My water is going to be slightly stained, not too much water. And run it along the stem. Run it along the stem and then drop in your colour. Let it do its own thing. What am doing here? Well, yeah, gives a bit of variety. Now I'm going to work on this one. I'm just going to work this area here. Not enough water in it. I could add some more. This brush doesn't hold an awful lot of water. There we go. Got it holding a bit more there. Probably too much now. It's trouble you buy a new brush. It's, you spend you spend ten years getting used to it, and then you have to replace it and learn all over again how it acts, how it behaves, because they're all different. They all have little personalities, you know. Now I'm going to come in and paint the tendrils, sweet peas, the climbers. So they have nice tendrils to help them hang on to things. 
wanted to include those. That really does say sweet pea when you see those. Because the, pl the flowers themselves are so abstract. Keeping them fine is the difficult bit. I think I managed it. Right, I'm going to work some more on the pea. I'm going to introduce a bit of the other colour into the green, actually. It's oh, a bit too much. <laughs> some of the area here. Oops. So I've got that blob of water on there. I need to get rid of it. Right. That's a nice green actually. It's almost a sap green. paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford and it's a heavyweight. It's their bright white colour. Saunders Waterford is lovely paper. It's 100% cotton and it can take a battering which is always good. I mean I don't need to do any battering with this painting but sometimes when I'm working on a painting that I'm using an awful lot of um, lifting off and things like that um, I need a paint, I need paper that can handle that. Right, this is the Derwent water soluble pencil and I'm going to use this to define some edges because normally, norm, for a normal painting, I would let these edges flow out into the background, I would have some colour in the background, but because this is for a design project, I need things to be crisper, so I'm going to work on the edges a little bit, just so I can find them digitally. <laughs> And I'm using this pencil and then I'm going to go over with some more watery washes that'll blend the pencil a little bit more into the painting. Because sometimes when you scan these things it doesn't pick them up too well. I haven't got the world's greatest scanner. And I'll just have a little bit coming around here. All right, that's a bit better. I've got to use this to rest on. Definitely need to work on this one. Utterly confusing. I'm varying the weight of the line as well. Something I like to do with all pencil work. 
Well, that's probably going to end up being varied anyway with the painting. On top of it. Now with a very weak wash, I'm now going to go over the entire petals again. This will soften what's down there already. It'll blend things together better. You might soften those edges a little bit. Soften the lines I've just drawn on as well. this green what color is this called olive green perfect oops I was a bit wet
there. I think I'm going to stop there. Because these now are ready to scan. So, don't want to fiddle, because that's what I do. I'm ter terrible for fiddling. So this is it. This is the finished painting. Using the core paints. There, I really enjoyed those. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to go along to my Patreon. The, uh, the link will be down below to access the free drawing if you want to just use the drawing yourself to trace. Thanks for watching. Bye.